Aloha and mahalo for listening to messages from Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands. We pray that you are inspired, challenged, and encouraged to become all that God has called for you to be. Are you excited today? Amen. Are you excited this afternoon? We, we are. Again, I'm going to introduce. We're having three sets of speakers. And uh, don't worry, they're not going to be a half hour each or anything like that. It's going to be the size of a regular message. But um, they're going to talk to you according to where you're at, you know, according to what your your Facebook relationship status is. Amen. We got uh, one of the, the, the uh, or uh, let, me, let me start from the third one first. We have Brother John and Sister Pina. Amen. They're a married couple that dedicated their kid this morning. They've been faithful leaders in our church. He oversees the media. They are, she's one of um, the core um, leaders with uh, uh, my wife right there. And they're just an awesome blessing to the church and serve in many, many areas within the ministry. And we love them a lot. And they're going to be talking to married couples. Amen. And then we have a second set that will go in between them. Amen. And, and they're going to be speaking on dating. And that's none other than Brother Gus and Sister Valerie. They are UTC alumni, and God has been using them here in Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands. They've been serving the Lord, and you know what? If as they they're going to be able to speak, they're going to be able to speak a little bit about how their process went. But they're going to be their, our second speakers. And then right now, help me welcome our first speaker. Amen. He is so faithful to God. We we love him very much. He's one of our warriors, and we need more men like him amen and he's uh I, I believe he's got a call in his life to be a pastor amen and i believe he, maybe we're going to be sending him out maybe who knows the marshall islands or something amen i do i see him one you know them short older men that are skinny and like they're but they're like a powerhouse you know what I'm talking about uh, that's how i see him and and uh, he's one of our warriors and uh, he's a life group leader an awesome life group let me tell you, if you want to go to a life group, it's it's hosted right there at Avelina's house and stuff. A good life group for young people and stuff. You know someone who's young or you got some uh, young man as, a, as one of your kids or nephews, send them their awesome life group. I want you to give a big welcome to, to Brother John. Amen. Amen. I'm very, very excited. I'm going to love our pastors. They're the bomb, aren't they? Um, but God is good. And all the time, you may be seated. Thank you, worship team. I must get right into my message this morning, because this afternoon, because we got powerful speakers ahead coming. So God is good. And all the time. Okay, I need you guys to talk back with me, okay, because we know we're a church, we're quiet, but today, this afternoon, you're going to talk back tonight, amen? Not to me, but to God, in a good way, though, in a good way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Jesus, my God, for this afternoon, God. We thank you, my God, for your presence, my God, that is in this place, God. We know, God, that let us not leave this place the same, God. Father, move, and I pray, God, let them hear the voice behind the voice. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I want to thank God for my salvation. Uh, I've been serving God almost, I think, seven years, going on seven, eight years. Faithfully, I thank God just for ex keeping power upon my life. His, you know, if it wasn't for God, I don't know where I would be. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't deserve to be behind this holy pulpit. I'm I deserve to be out there lost somewhere. But I thank God that he saved my life. And I thank God for just his keeping power and just for his loving and for giving me pastors, awesome pastors. Pastor Tony, Mama Vero, the Velasco family. I love you guys. You guys are truly, truly my family. The leadership, I thank you guys for this opportunity. And then also my spiritual parents. Uh, man, to me, God, they're not here. I thank them for just imparting my life and for... But I know I say this a lot, uh, spiritually spanking me, but they don't literally spank me, but they're, they're awesome. I love them. I love them. And then uh, Faith, Miracle, Sailor, Charisma, Baby Matt, the Prince. I thank them. I love them very much. And then let's go into the message, amen. Well, I've been, lately I've been 
I've been like, man, God, give me a word. This past week, I'm like, God, give me a word. Give me a word. And then I think it was Friday night. I didn't sleep till like 3 in the morning. I didn't sleep till, till like 3 in the morning. Like, God, I need, I need a word. I need a word. So finally, God spoke to me, and he told me, why don't you just speak about what, 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 what taught you, what the ministry taught you, and what I taught you. So I got five points this afternoon on what my ministry taught me and, and what my leaders taught me. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be reading in the book of Philippians 4.13. Then if you get there, I, didn't, I was looking for a title too. So finally, when I was sitting, when I was, before I came here, God gave me a title. He says, your blessing is there. Your blessing is there. And I just want to throw this little psalm psalm because I heard it from a powerful pastor. I don't know who. Your blessing is there. In order for you to get your blessing, you got to get there. That blessing won't just come to you. You got to get there. Come on, somebody. You're there? Philippians 4.13. I know you guys know the scripture. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Isaiah 41.10, you don't have to turn there, or if they can put it up in the screen, Isaiah 41.10. And I'm going to read for the sake of time. It says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will help all you with my righteous right hand. We have a mission. Victory, Irish, Hawaiian Islands. We have a mission. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. As his followers, we are to be in age fighting against the attack against us. The Bible says the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So you be careful. As Victory Irish Hawaiian Islands, we need to know that the devil comes to kill. We are called to reach our islands. We got Maui to take. We got Big Island to take. We got uh, uh, Lanai to take. Come on, I don't know if it's a line, but there's a line called Lanai. You might not know. You might get sent out there. So you be ready, my friend. We are called. It wasn't easy serving God in school. I know I forgot to share that in my testimony, but I served God in my intermediate days and my high school days. And let me tell you, it's not easy serving God in school. Temptation is to the left. Temptation, oh, to the left. Temptation is to the right. And temptation is in the front and in the back. Temptation is everywhere. And serving God in school, oh my God, I need, I need, I need, I needed to carry my Bible. I know I had Raiden with me, I had Dusty with me, I had Linton with me, Mighty Gang Warriors. I had my best friend Shanky with me. You guys don't know, he's, he's my best friend, Anthony and uh, Anthony and Shanky, they're my best friends. I love them, I forgot to mention them, I wrote their name down, I had to make sure that, you know, I saw the name Anthony and Shanky. But, but let's get back into the word. Um, but it wasn't hard serving God. It wasn't hard serving God in school. I was struggling. Though, though, yeah, I was coming to church, yeah, we fall short. Yeah, we might make mistakes. But God has told me that this ministry, that's why I'm so grateful for this ministry. I'm so grateful for my pastors. I'm so grateful Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie. I thank God for Pastor Phil, our, our gang um, overseer, leader of the gang. He's just great leaders and Matt, Papa Matt. I thank God for these awesome leaders uh, uh, before me. Thank God for this ministry. Five things that, five things that my church and God have helped me to stay single. Well, I'm gonna be talking about waiting. Come on, somebody. You know, waiting. You know, I've been single all my life, 19 years. Come on, somebody. I'm 19, by the way. And I've been single all my life, 19 years. And that lady better be, oh, I can't say that. Oh, 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 lady, get out of there. I'm talking about waiting, okay? Lady, get out of there. God, me and God. So I'm going to be talking about waiting, single. So five things that God in my church have taught me to stay single or pure. Number one is servant. Before coming to Christ, I didn't know I served. I didn't know what was serving. I didn't know I served my, my family. I love my mom and dad. Shout out to my family. If you're watching, I love them. But, but me growing up, I, I didn't know I serve. I, I didn't know I serve. But when I came into this ministry, Victory Outreach Island, the time you serve. So if you have your Bible, please turn to the book of Galatians 5, 13. And then, you, and then if you get there, tell your neighbor your blessing is there.
Galatians 5.13. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, we're called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather than serve one another humbly and love. Well, I'm in the gang home. I have brothers. And I'm the, I think I'm the youngest one. So, my God, <laughs> I had to learn to serve my older brothers because <laughs> I'm the youngest one. And, you know, and then sometimes Matt would tell me, hey, go tell them to do the chores, right? I'm like, me? I'm like the youngest one. You know, I don't want to. But then I had to, you know, be humble. And I had to, Matt taught me how to be serving. My pastors, I just see there's great servants. And I just watch. I watch a lot. I watch my leaders. And they also taught me how to serve. So it says, my brothers and sisters, we're called to be free, but do not use your freedom. To indulge the flesh rather than serve one another. We are called to serve anybody and anybody. And, and oh wait, we are called to serve anybody and everybody. So we are called to serve our pastors. We are called to serve our leaders. We are even called to serve our enemies. We are called to serve anybody. Come on, somebody. Second point. Number point, point one was servant. Second point is faithful. This ministry taught me and God taught me how to be faithful. I had to learn how to stay faithful. Matthew 25, 23, it says, his master replied, we will, well done and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your, your master's happiness. Where he says, you have been faithful with few things. Well, me coming to Christ, yeah, I was faithful with few things. But now, without, if I wasn't faithful to this ministry, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't play the drums. Now I play the drums. I play the drums now God, because my faithfulness, yeah, before coming to Christ, I was faithful in few things. But, but, but my, look at what my faithful to lead me to is become a drummer. I love drumming. For the sake of time, third point, obedient. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to arm you, plans to give you hope and a future. As, I stay, as we stay as a church, as we stay obedient to our leaders, to our pastors, the Lord will bless us. Amen? I don't know how to say this word, Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6.5. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. God, is, God has a calling upon us. For you and I, God has a calling upon us. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 10, 10, 3, 5, it says, we are, to fight, we are to fight the good fight. Satan has declared war on us. So if you have a time, please read 2 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, someone has, someone, someone had once said, one act of obedience is better than 100 sermons. It says, one act of obedience is better than servants. I have to stay obedient to my leaders and to my pastors and most of all to God. And we got to learn how to stay obedient. And God has a calling for you and I. And when that calling comes, we got we to gotta be obedient. Amen? Yeah. And then the fourth point is loyal. Loyal. We got to be loyal to our ministry. And if you don't know the mission statement, I encourage you to learn the mission statement. I knew it, but then had someone to print out because I, I wanted to make sure that I said the right thing. It says, Victory Irish is an international church-oriented Christian ministry called to the tax of evangelizing, discipling, the hurting people of the world with the message of hope, plan of Jesus Christ. So if you don't know our ministry, we are called to, re to reach the hurting people of this world. Amen. I am grateful. Like, I'm going to keep saying it over and over because I love this ministry. If it wasn't for this ministry, I wouldn't be here. I'm so grateful for my ministry. Our Victory Irish is a unique ministry. Amen? The loyal. Last point, as I bring to a close, is having a praying life. We have, we gotta, it's very important to have a praying life because without praying, I know Brother George always say this, you pray, you will stay. But if you don't pray, you won't stay. So you got to have a praying life. Pray for that. If you're not faithful, pray God. I pray for faithfulness. Uh, pray for being obedient, for loyal. Amen? Amen. And with that, I'm going uh, to um, call up the powerful next speakers. I think I'm over my time. Um, but.
but I'm gonna call them up, give the hand to Val and Gus. Amen, praise the Lord. Come on, let's give little, Jenna, little John a hand. Amen, John, you did awesome, bro. Come on, somebody, take the Marshall Islands for Jesus, amen. Well, here this afternoon, amen, me and Valerie have the opportunity to be able to share about dating. And real quick, we just wanted to, you know, give you guys a, a quick little background of, of how we met and, and, you know, how long we were friends before we started dating. And uh, Val caught eyes on me, actually. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stop I'm just then. kidding, but it was, uh, uh, we were friends for about three years. We actually met in the training center, and uh, we were friends there in the UTC. And then after, after the training center, we were, uh, we were friends, and in my heart, I was like, man, I, I think I like this girl. I, I think I like Valerie, and then I, per I ended up pursuing it. You know, I ended up pursuing it, and I, I didn't, it wasn't something that I did on my own. You know, I had to go through counseling sessions, through, you know, I was asking my leaders, hey, what do you think? Hey, hey should I do it? Hey, because um, I didn't want to do it on my own. You know, I didn't want to lean on my own understanding. And there was around at least like three, four people that I talked to before I decided to ask her out. And, uh, and the hardest one was pastor. You know, I was like, oh, Lord, this is a tough one. You know, I was like, man, he's big. You know, he's, he's a big dude, you know. And uh, so, so we were friends for about three years, and then we've been, uh, we've been dating for a, for a year and a, and a month now. And, uh, man, I can say that the Lord has blessed me, you know, not just with a beautiful girl, but a woman of God. Amen. And, and that's something that when I first got saved, I knew that one day God was going to bless me with a woman of God. And I can say that today the Lord has blessed me. Amen. And Amen. And so we're going to be talking about dating today. And um, first, I'm going to be sharing uh, for a little bit, and then he's going to be sharing uh, what God gave him. Amen. And um, if you guys could turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading there as you guys are turning. Um, it says, Teacher, which is the most important command in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm going to stop right there. And um, if you guys could just focus your attention on love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, my first point is love yourself. And so in this scripture, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, I'm going to school right now. And when, as you go into college um, and you're, like, furthering your education and stuff, um, you have what's called a prerequisite. Have you guys heard of that before? A prerequisite. And um, so what that basically is, is it's like you, you can't take this class until you take this class. Okay, so um, so I have to go through that. I got to take an English class before I could get into uh, uh, you know a different class, right? And so in this scripture, it says, "Love your neighbor as your as yourself." So the prerequisite there is yourself. And you know, um, before you could love your neighbor, before you could love anybody else, you know, John talked about waiting. Before you could even uh, think about loving anybody else, you first have to love yourself. And, you know, I think that's very important. And, you know, I have got saved at the age of 12 years old. And, you know, I went throughout middle school and high school. And I've uh, tried my best to keep a good testimony and a reputation, um, not just at church but at school too. And, you know, not dating a bunch of guys, not talking to a bunch of guys. But, you know, I really tried to, you know, stay, um, stay the course in that and um, really giving my singleness to God, you know. And, and that's the first important thing. Thing before you even enter into a relationship is giving your singleness unto God and giving him that time of your life. You know, you hear Paul talk a lot about how the, so much you could do in your singleness, you know, and, and that's important that we catch that. And, you know, I was listening to a message and he said, you know, a lot of uh, problems in marriages, it's because um, uh, people get together and they, they didn't work on themselves first before getting with someone. And I'm going to go to my next point. My next point is Choose wisely. And in 1 Corinthians 15.33, it says, 1 Corinthians 
15.33, it says, Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. And my second point is choose wisely. You know, and the person that you pick, it's so important. You know, um, if you cook a, if you cook an omelet, if you're making an omelet, you can't cook it with a rotten egg and a good egg. You know, it's going to come out, it's not going to come out good because of that one rotten egg, even if the other egg is good. So even if you're good, that doesn't matter. You got to pick somebody who's good for you or else, you know, bad company, it corrupts good character. And you hear that scripture that talks about how if you're unequally yoked and, and you know, that's, that talks, you know, basically describes that scripture, you know, not being unequally yoked, you know, and a lot of us, you know, we, we, we can't even consider um, someone who's not saved as an option. You know, if you're single, you know, choose someone who's saved with the same values, same convictions. And, you know, that was something that, that I was attracted to about Gus is even though, because you could be in the house of God and there's people who think differently than you, you know, who have a different, um, you know, thinking of view of things. And, and me and Gus, you know, I, I feel like we had the same, like we have the same convictions, you know, we had the same way of thinking, the same philosophy, you know, we're after the same goal, you know, the same target. And, you know, um, and that's one of the things. And, and uh, my third point is listening. And not just, first, listen to the way the other person talks. If you're attracted to someone, if you're considering someone, get around them. You know, go around them and hear how they talk. Hear what they talk about, what they're listening to, you know, who they hang around with. And that's important that you're, you're looking at that, you know, that when you're considering someone as an option, that you're, you know, doing your homework, doing your research, you know, and not giving someone the time of day if, you know, they don't deserve it, right? And my second, the second part of listening is listen to the counsel of your leaders, and your your pastors, amen. And that's gonna bring me to my last scripture, Proverbs nineteen twenty. In Proverbs nineteen twenty, it says, "Get all the advice and instruction you can, so you will be wise the rest of your life." And you know, I I really believe that when you like someone, you're not like sober minded. You know, your 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 view is kind of blurred. You know, you only see what you want to see. You see the good and, you know, you you kind of um, minimize the bad things in those people's lives. And, you know, um, that's why it's so important that we get instruction, that we that we're getting you're, we're seeking counsel. When we like someone, we got to, you know, we got to remember that, hey, you know, um, what our pastors say, their opinions, their le our leaders opinions. You know, we got to honor that. Amen. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Gus. And praise the Lord. Come on, let's give Bell a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was awesome. I was just literally standing by you, just watching you preach. Amen. <laughs> that was cool. Amen. Praise the Lord. And real quick, I just wanted to make mention, you know, when you hear a lot of people testify, you know, uh, maybe, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of ladies or a lot of young ladies, you know, when, when God saves them, you know, there, there's something that, that, that comes to, you know, that, that, that's in common. And some people say that they were looking for love in all the wrong places. And I'm here to let you know that, 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 man, our generation doesn't have to go looking for love in wrong places. You know, because we're in the right place uh, this afternoon. You know, God has, has opened up our doors. God has allowed us to be here to, to, to be able to let others know that, hey, the love of God is the only love that you need. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you guys could turn with me to the book of. Second, uh, First Chronicles chapter 28. And, you know, I've heard it said in the past, you know, I've heard it said that there's going to be two, you know, two of the biggest decisions that you're going to make, you know, in your lifetime. And, and one of them is the day when you give your life to Jesus. And the other one is the person you that you decide to marry. Amen. And, and I remember, you know, as a young Christian, you know, I was taught that that when we date. You know, us Christians, that when we date, that we don't date the way the world dates. Come on, somebody. The world has a corrupted way of dating. You know, they want to play dating games. Ah, oh, no, you're the one. They want to decide who they're going to spend the rest of their life with within a matter of, of a minute. Come on, somebody. But we don't date the, the way the world dates. You know, I was taught that when we date, we date to marry. Amen. And that's probably going to be the second hardest question that I'm going to ask pastor. Amen. <laughs> In my lifetime. Amen. And, but we don't, we, we don't date the way the world dates, that we date, 
to marry, amen, and, and people have gone before us, you know, people have set an example, people have set a bar, you know, a, a, of what a godly relationship looks like, you know, and when I first got saved, that's something huge, that was something big to me that I really admired, I was like, man, look at this couple right here, man, they look so happy, they look so blessed, you know, and, and you see it, how many of us... How many of us know that it is evident when you see a couple, when they are walking in the will of the Lord, when they're following after God's plan, that is something attractive. And as a young Christian, that has always been something that, that's been attractive to me. For example, you know, my, you know uh, one of the pastors that, that I was under, Pastor Ezra, man, his life and his, and his family's life was always attractive to me. You know, our pastors here, come on somebody, their relationship is attractive. You know, and here in this portion of scripture, you know, when I think about dating, you know, I don't just think about dating, oh, let's get married, but, but I think of a responsibility. You know, I think of the, uh, the responsibility that one day, hey, I'm going to lead a, I'm going to lead my own family. You know, hey, one day I'm going to lead my little clan. You know, I, I think of the responsibility that I have as a man. You know, it's not just fun and games for right now, but man, it comes with a price. And here in this portion of scripture that I'm going to read real quick, it's, it's King David. You know, I love this portion of scripture. I love this story. And it's King David giving some advice to his son. You know, he's telling him, hey, you know what's cool that me, John, and Val, literally somewhere in our message, we're, we're about to use the same scripture. And Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, it says, you know, you shall love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Man, we are in tune this morning. Come on, somebody. And here in this portion of scripture, the word says, Now therefore, in the sight of all of Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land. He's giving his son advice. Hey, look, look at my life, and look what God has done for me. But hey, the promise was given to me for you. You know, the promise wasn't just David's. It was for his inheritance. It was for the sons that were to come after him. And he's telling them, hey, look, David, I've gathered, I've gathered the nation of Israel. In other words, I've gathered the church to commend you in their sight that, hey, I, I, I'm telling you in front of all these people so that one day they will hold you accountable. And how many of us know that uh, uh, us as young people, us as married couples, we, we, we need to set an example of what a godly relationship looks like. You know, uh, me and Val... You know, a lot of people say, I probably don't recognize it, but man, you, they, they say, man, you guys are a good example. You know, and that blesses my heart to say that, hey, man, I'm following in the, in the will of the Lord. Hey, I'm listening to what other people got to say. I don't make decisions on my own. You know, I, I go to my leaders. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Hey, they move my, for example, they move my shift to six. I want to give in my two weeks. Hey, no, we'll do this first. You know, I take advice. I don't just move on things. And here, David is telling them, hey, don't move on things. Listen, be obedient. Just listen to what, the word, listen to what God is telling you. And, uh, and real quick, you know, I know we're running short on time, but, uh, but it says in, in this portion of Scripture, it's, it's talking about un, unswerving and, and, and carrying out the, the, the commandments and the laws of God. So in other words, not changing or becoming weak in these things. You know, values and principles ain't something that we lose over, uh, over time. You know, the same way that I pursued Val before I started dating her, hey, I think I should give that to her every day. Amen. And thank God that I'm reminded, amen, I need to be reminded of that. That I need to not just pursue her before I had her, but continue to pursue her. You know, it's not something that I'm going to lose when I marry her, but it's something that I'm going to advance in, something that I'm going to get better at. So it's not changing or becoming weak. But it's being steady and constant. It's something that I'm going to continually do. And like I said, you know, uh, it is a, it's, not, it's not just something that we do, but it's a responsibility. Amen. And he got charged in, in the presence of the Lord. And, you know, I see a lot of young people here in the house, man. I, I remember they used to tell me, hey, don't fall for the fried ice cream. And I'm here to let you know, don't fall for the fried ice cream. You know, continue to follow in the will of the Lord. Like John said, hey, one day God's going to bless me. You know, but we got to make God a priority. We got to put God first. We got to give God his place. You know, if you desire to live a blessed life, put God first. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and close out. Amen. As our third speakers get ready to come up.
Amen. How many of you enjoying yourself this afternoon? Amen. Yeah. And Gus hit it on the nail there. Uh, you know, Gus and Val and and uh, you know, I don't even want to call him Little John anymore because you know what? I do believe, man. There's 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 so much greatness within within John Lockbow. Amen. And so I think we need think think we need to graduate that. You know, and so but uh, but other than that, they're great examples of 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 how to how to do things the right way as a single and dating. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's give John and Val and Gus another hand. Amen. And let's give Jesus a hand. Amen. Well, we're going to be talking about the mating part. We've been, we just celebrated nine years of marriage. Yes. <sighs> nine years. It's been tough. You're welcome. <laughs> but I am blessed. I am a blessed woman that I have this man right here. He answered the call of God. He went to the men's home. He's a graduate of the men's home. That I'm very grateful for because if he didn't answer that call, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be a part of this great ministry. Amen. I thank the leaders. Thank you, Pastor Tony Cicevero, Pastor Turi Sister Melissa, and all our le leaderships here. Um, and then also for him. Amen. <laughs> um, I'm going to go right into it. Um, we're going to be reading from Ecclesi Ecclesiastes <laughs> 4, 9 through 12. Two people are better off than one. Everybody, everybody say better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other one can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is the real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can, can keep each other warm. <laughs> but how can, be, how can one be warm alone? Sorry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is, is. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time, but amen. I'm like, we're going to speak about mating. They want us to speak about mating. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, amen. Um, but three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Amen. One, it's okay. Two, it's better than one. But three is even better. Amen. So I'm going to be talking about some do's that us wives can be doing for our husband, for you future wives. Three do's. Amen. One, you, you do care about pleasing your mate more than yourself. <laughs> That's selfless. That's being selfless. Amen. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean you don't have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of him first before you take care of yourself. But uh, because in the word, that's what's in the word of God. You know, we take care of our husband. They are our first priority. They are our ministry. Amen. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> Two is do compliment your spouse. Like, hey, I love your beard. You should trim it all. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I told him just trim it nicely, you know, not the whole thing. I like him having his beard. Amen. <laughs> uh, you know, tell them nice things. Hey, I like your outfit. You're wearing a nice clothes. Yes. And you're so handsome. Yes. You know, talk to them like, you know, love them. Love your husband and you know, for a husband, love your wife. The Bible said it. Pastor even read it this morning that husbands love your wives. Everybody, <laughs> all the husbands say love your wives. Love your wife. Yes. We're just going to focus on just the husband part. Not <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> These compliments needs to be sincere, though. Don't just say you know what, your beard is so nice today. Like, like so fast, you know, like, oh, babe, I love you so much. You, you have a nice beard or, you know, like say it so sincere. Like talk to your husband like you mean it from your heart. Amen. Don't just blab out things like, oh, you look good. I guess that outfit could go. You know, you have to mean it like, hey, I think you should wear that shoes with that outfit. It's going to compliment your beard or your hair or, you know, whatever you're wearing. Like, you know, talk to your husband. Like, don't let him get out the door with no matching clothes on. Amen. And then three is 
you're committed to you're committed to each other you know to get rid of the if factors couples needs to dismiss any thought of wondering if their marriage will last you know like oh is this gonna last what if we don't work out what if our marriage don't last you know take that out take that if and say you know what god is gonna make us last god is gonna bring us closer together god is gonna work within our lives you know being committed to the goal is first step in making it happen amen so i'm gonna pass it on to jonathan Amen, amen. I love you. I'm, she's actually making me feel jealous of my beard. Like, I just need to get rid of it. Like, it's getting more attention than me. <laughs> that won't happen, though. Amen. I'm just going to read a, a short portion of scripture out of Proverbs 16.3. Amen. And um, again, you know, we're talking about marriage and mating. And you know what? Um, we just want to encourage just, you know, to, that that the importance of placing God within the center of it all. Amen. Because because before we came into this ministry, before we came to these doors, before I came into the home, it was it was over with. You know, I came into the home. I remember my my home director praying, "Oh, you know, what? we're gonna pray over your marriage and you know, pray for restoration." And I laughed at him. I was like, "Yeah, she's gone. There's no chance for it." Amen. But it's a test. We stand here a testimony of that that God's restoration power that He's in the miracle working business. Amen. And that um. We, we rely on uh, the scripture to continue to see us through, amen. In uh, Proverbs 16, 3, a uh, New Living Translation, it says, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed, amen. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And you know what? We take this to our marriage because whatever we do, our, our, whole, our whole marriage, the whole union that we have, we commit to the Lord. And you know what? We're not, we're not, we got, we, through this, we've been able to get rid of that if factor, if it's going to work out, if, if things are going to continue on the right path. You know what? Because when we commit it to the Lord, the word of God says it shall succeed. So as long as we continue to put our marriage, put God in the center of our marriage, we know that it's going to succeed. And we know that if you put God in the center of your marriage, the center of, of your relationship, that will succeed. Amen. And with your relationship, we just want to encourage that there's no distance in which restoration can't reach you in, amen. Whether you're on, whether you're, you might feel in your relationship might be on a rocky road, may that it may be on the the, the brink of failure. It will not, it, it will not outrun God's reach, amen. And so it's really important that we're, when we're talking about marriage, to have it Christ-centered, amen. Because we know that God wants to do something within your lives. God wants to use you in a powerful way. He knows that through this ministry that you have a calling, that you have an appointing upon your life, amen, not just to serve God, but to be used as a couple, amen, to build churches, to be pastors, to be evangelists, amen, to be, to be world takers, city shakers, amen. It's, that's why it's so important that you keep God in the center of your relationship. Because, the, you know, the devil doesn't want to see you unified. The devil doesn't want to see couples together. He wants to do everything to set you apart because he knows that with God, you could set it off, amen. That you could set it off in a great way and being an example and how, how you could be used by God and how God could be the center of it all, amen. And through, through the leadership, amen, through, through seeing the lives of Pastor Tony and Sister Veronica and Pastor Tootie and Sister Melissa, I've, I've come up with these three things that have allowed us to... to to not only just stick it out, amen, but to thrive, amen. How many want a relationship that thrives, amen, that doesn't just want to just stick it out, amen, but, but just go to the next level? So the first point that, I, that, 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 that God's placed upon our heart that we use in our relationship to continue to, to move forward in the things of God and, and within our salvation is to continue to bond, amen. And when, I think, when, I, when I'm talking about bond is to continue to practice the ability to stick to one another, amen? Not stick it out because of each other. You know, not to that spirit where it's like you wake up in the morning, you, you're going to speak to your spouse, and you're like, oh, God, give me the strength, my God. No, you need, we need you to get into the point of, of having an intimate friendship with your spouse, amen? That's so important, you know, to have, to have that to have that spirit, you know what I mean? Because, you know, my, the reason why you might see we're all happy and everything, you know, the chungs, you know why? Because Pina's... <laughs> Pina, Pina's really my best friend, you know. This is my best friend and, and someone who, who we could just continue to build 
within humor, you know what I mean, talking to one another. And so it's really important that your spouse becomes your best friend. That's how, that's how a bond is going to be built, amen, to last no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation comes within you and your family's life. It's that bond that's going to be able to keep you together, that friendship, amen. The second point is to have balance. And when I talk about balance, I'm not talking about like, oh, man, I work for eight hours eight hours a day, but I don't have eight hours to spend with my wife or eight hours to spend with my kids. But as a, but as a couple, as a family, amen, as, as, as learning to grow within your marriage, balance isn't a, adjusted according to your time, but it's adjusted according to your effort, amen. That's, that means that, that you might not have the equal amount of time to spend with your spouse, to spend with your family because of this or that. So the only reason to make up with that is the, is to give it 100% in whatever area you have. You have eight hours at work, you give it your 100%. You have two hours uh, uh, in between services to spend time with your kids, you give it 100%. Your balance within your relationship is, is, is going to be based on your effort, amen? So make sure, make sure your balance is based through your effort and whatever time that you have with your family, with your kids, with your spouse, you give it your 100%, amen? And the third point, between uh, uh, being a couple that learns to bond and balance is to build, amen? See, your affection is just good enough to get you through the beginning, but building is going to be more than enough to make it to the end, amen? And when I talk about building, I'm not just talking about building a relationship or building balance within your life. I'm talking about being a couple that accepts the role that you've been called by God, amen, that you've been brought together for a reason, amen? And you know what I'm talking about? building you know what i mean there's through building memories and building moments within your relationship within your family's life the best memories and the best the best things that are going to be built man are going to be through the things of god within the house of god amen because because we're 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 a true testimony to be able to see to have our best memories the best building moments that are still continuing with each other amen to be able to hit the streets with my wife and see her praying over somebody to see my kids out there in the streets 12 o'clock amen at night still still handing out flyers amen to be able to go to car washes we make it a family trip amen it's it's not it's not just a simple car wash, but it's an opportunity to lift up the kings of God and I mean the the king of the king of kings, amen, and to be able to build up this church. We make it a family event, amen, to 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 do things within Christ, amen. And we just want to encourage everybody to continue to build your relationship within the things of God. And you know what? We want to make a special mention, a special thank you to to the couples that came out to the uh, the Valentine's banquet yesterday. Amen. Because how Pastor and Sister Veronica says, it really means something. It really means that you value the things of God, that you value your relationship being Christ-centered. Amen. And we want to continue to 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 encourage that. Amen. Amen. And as we as we close out, we just want to encourage you just to keep Christ within the center of it all. Amen. If we could all stand. Christ within the center of it all. And you know we've had we've heard powerful, powerful speakers, amen. We've heard on on, on the importance of, of of waiting, amen, the importance of dating, some tips on on mating, amen. But through it all, the one thing that keeps everything together is to have Christ in the center, amen. And I just want to share a quick story. I remember when I was in the home, and I remember when we weren't together, uh, I had an opportunity to, to, to make a house visit um, without my immense home director knowing, though. But I remember, I remember uh, we were doing our part for Hawaii, and, and, and we jump out this car. I led my home director into the neighborhood where my wife was in. He asked if there was a good neighborhood he, he knew about, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I knew one, I knew a place, good place down the street. And so I remember just hopping out the van and going over to the house where my wife was, and I remember opening up the door and thinking, I'm like, man, I did it. I was able to, able to, uh, to make it in front of my wife, to apologize, to just touch my kids. And you know what? When I opened up that door, when that door opened, it was not what I expected at all. This, this smiling bundle of joy here was was complete opposite, you know. And I remember I took that to heart the, um, the next day after after my rebuke and dishes. And um, <laughs> and you know what? I came to the to the knowledge that you know what? 
there's nothing that we could do apart from Christ. No matter what, no matter, no matter the, uh, the things that we try, remember the, 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 the plans that you may come up with, nothing is going to come according until you put God in the middle of it. As the Bible says right there, whatever you commit to the Lord shall succeed, amen. That relationship that, that, that may seem on the rocks, you know what? You place God in the center of it, it's going to succeed. You know that, that, that dating, that, 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 that boyfriend or girlfriend that you have within Christ, you know what? You continue to put God in the center of it, amen? And God is surely going to bless your life. Single, that, 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 that you may feel, that you may feel uh, 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 empty, you may see, and you may judge according to, to what you see. You want, you want what they have, but you know what? Be content on what you have, and you know what you have? You have a God that loves you, amen? Re- Regard, regardless of your, your situation, regardless of your stance, regardless of how you may feel about yourself, you have a God that loves you for who you are. And right now, we just want to, I, I just want you to lift your hands and just get into the presence of God and understand that the greatest relationship that you could have is one with Christ Jesus. And right there, I just want you to, 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 to speak to the Lord, share your love with Him. If you're married, I want you to grab the to grab the hand of your spouse and pray for him, to tell Jesus how much you appreciate the love that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. Amen. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, my God, for your love, Lord. Oh, we worship you, oh, Jesus. God, we worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We love you, my God. You, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Jesus, I may be weak, but your spirit strong in me. My flesh may right fail. Now we just want to open up these altars. We just want to invite you, single ones. If you if you've been struggling with it, being single, if you need prayer, we want to encourage you to come up and meet the feet of Jesus. We want to invite you, couples, whether you're dating, whether you're married. To come place God within the center of it, amen. God, if your you relationship is rocky, or if you just need a form, we just want to invite you up. We want to give you an opportunity to pray for you.